Hey everyone, welcome back to another Redstone video. Today we're taking a, a quick step back in time to have a little look at the previous smelter that I made uh, maybe about a year or so ago. I, I do forget timelines at this point, but uh, I made this smelter a little while ago. It's been displayed in a couple places since then, and I've noticed a few people give me a little bit of feedback on it, so I thought it'd be a good time to maybe uh, take care of some of the feedback given to me by the, uh, by the audience and maybe add a couple of changes that I think I probably should have made when I originally designed this, but, you know, we evolved a little bit as time goes on, so I think some things uh, just end up making more sense later on as opposed to, you know, when you originally build it. So what I'm going to do, I'll go for a couple small changes with you, try and keep this quick. Um, I've got a couple other videos that I'm going to be releasing soon, so I want to get those going as well. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get this fixed. And obviously, if you do, if it does end up being helpful to you, make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's get on to the fixes. So I think the first thing that's best to start off with is the reason why I was actually looking into making this video in the first place, uh, which is the output. So I had a couple messages uh, on some of the videos uh, stating that even though items were getting smelted uh, at a certain rate, the return of items actually going back up to the top over there were a little bit uh, a bit slow. That's actually two reasons. Number one is the um, output speed is taking it from 32 hoppers into one dropper and there's a little bit of backlog that ends up just kind of like making its way into the dropper and doesn't get spat out quick enough. The second reason is that obviously we're running on hopper speed here. So if I break things up a little bit, oh, that's catastrophic. <laughs> Luckily, this is just a quick copy. But um, if we have a look at things and how it is here, we're relying on two hoppers to input all the items. And honestly speaking, it's just not quick enough. Um, there's a couple ways to mitigate this and I would say that the probably the best one is that if you're really only smarting a couple items like a double chest worth at a time then honestly you're better off just removing the output chest altogether and collecting the items manually. The other one is obviously to wait. There will be one more other solution which I'll probably outline at the end of this video if it ends up being viable. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit more of an expensive one, but it should make things a little bit easier. But before we get to actually this part here, because again, this can be mitigated with just standing by the items and picking them up um, or just waiting for it to be picked up by the hopper. Either way is fine, um, but we'll come back to a few of those solutions. But let's start off with the output festival as this is where the main bottleneck actually ends up being. So what we're actually going to want to do is we're going to move this dropper from the side input over here into the bottom just like that. So what we'll do is once you've uh, removed all the little mechanics over here, go ahead and add the dropper to the bottom over here. The next thing that we're going to want to do is to get rid of this hopper line uh, just temporarily because we're going to want to move things over. So the first thing that we're going to do is to bring in this hopper line just like that. That should now take care of these 16 furnaces on this side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give it a separate output into the dropper uh, on this side. So something like that should suffice. Um, now the 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 because the dropper is essentially once the clock is running going to be running at double dropper speed, and at the moment it's not having the opportunity to do that. Um, or it wasn't having the opportunity to do that. But now that you're having each output of the sixteen furnaces take care of um, uh, you know double dropper speed, so we're getting double hopper speed out of uh, thirty two furnaces altogether. So now that should help with any item clogging that you were originally having. Now, obviously, we're adding a few extra hoppers here. So just to mitigate a little bit of the lag, what we're going to go ahead and do is put some composters on top. This should help with, you know, at least some of the lag that's going to come out of this. It's not going to get rid of it completely, but I don't think lag efficiency is the thing we're aiming for here. So now, obviously, um, the output has changed a little bit here. And uh, what we're going to want, what we're going to want to do is to first of all place a block uh, on top like that. That should stop any items from uh, flying upwards and then not ending up in the section where it should. And uh, we're going to take care of two things here in this scenario. So again, as I mentioned, or as I may have mentioned, uh, before we were using a, a system where the observer was being spat in and out um, of the clock. So before, when when the comparator would go off, it'd be like that. And, you know, it's, it's not a great solution, generally speaking, because what can happen is the observer can get spat out in the wrong state, and then you might end up having it where the observers ends up over here and then you've got items still in the, in the uh, dropper and it hasn't taken care of what you need it to do. So we're going to change that mechanism as well. We're going to have it on just an on off state. So what we're going to want to do first of all is to uh, from the dropper over here, we're going to want to come down one block and we're going to grab the comparator for us. And we're going to face that out just like that. And uh, we're going to also have 
the observer in this location and we're going to have the um a block in front of the comparator just there and we're going to grab a redstone torch we're going to have a, a redstone torch just on top of the block and we're going to want to face a, a sticky piston downwards and we'll paste another observer in like that so now when we get the out items and the output that should take care of all the items at a very good rate so that should be uh, pretty much the easiest solution. So the other option I had, uh, which requires a note block instead, either one works. So whatever you prefer, if for any reason you don't want to have this here or you, you find that, you know, you want to have it in a different state, you can do. So you can just put a note block here instead, put the sticky piston in like that and then have the observer facing down into you and then just put the other observer in like that. And it should do exactly the same thing. I put in 64 items, same situation. Um, I actually prefer this solution better, but I guess redstone blocks are like a tiny bit more expensive than a redstone torch. Um, but uh, if, you, if you're gonna, if I was gonna recommend one, I'd recommend this one to you. But otherwise, it doesn't really matter. The main idea really was just to get rid of this lag that we had with hoppers here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is get rid of the toggle state on this side as well. And we're actually gonna go ahead and kill two birds of one stone. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of this honey block or slime block, whatever it was that you were originally using. We're gonna go ahead and eat that all together. So uh, the second thing we're going to want to do here is, again, we are going to have this block here. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a sticky piston and put that just like so. And then what we're going to do here is break that. We'll get rid of all of this too. So in front of this comparator, all we want to do is add in another block. And we're going to put in a, uh, uh, a redstone block here. Apologies, that's actually supposed to be like that. And the reason why this is currently extended, because I don't have a minecart sitting in that side. And oh, that's a bit funky. Let's get that in place properly, shall we? What's happening here? Okay, the minecart's in place. That should be now picking up fuel again. And what you're going to see in a second is that this is actually going to end up uh, retracting again. So that will just uh, replace the original mechanism that we had. We can go ahead and get rid of this altogether. And hopefully soon we'll see that retract. There we go and then the second mechanism we want to change is the one for the output of the fuel so what i'll do is i'll simulate how your uh, input should look i think uh what you want to do here is have all of that covered in fuel so you can see that will then say it's full and then all we want to do again is to have a redstone block coming out of the block that's putting into the comparator we're going to go ahead and put another block there we're going to add a block just like that uh, sorry a redstone torch in front of it a block there and then we're going to add in some redstone dust. And actually, the last thing we do need will be uh, that redstone torch. You can see that just triggered because it should be on an off state. Um, but I've gone ahead and got rid of that. Once that returns, that should be good to close again once it's picked up the items. And it works in the exact same way as it was working before. But number one, we've got rid of the sticky block that was here. So now this doesn't use any slime or um, honey or anything like that. And it also makes it more reliable. Now you don't have to worry about the, the uh, observer spitting it out in the wrong state. So the fix for the output chest is a slightly less glamorous uh, fix, unfortunately, because yeah, again, it was just something that was kind of overlooked when I originally made it. So your options are twofold. Again, you can either remove the output chest stand there and pick up items i can understand that's not the most ideal thing to do so that's not my recommended option for you but here is an option that will work and um it isn't that great but i'll, I'll run through some other things with you in a minute but that's not you know that that might be somewhat useful but let's try and see if we can fix the solution first so the solution i had here was instead to reroute the water stream uh, a little bit closer and then have it go up here and then what we do is we split the output into um, a hopper minecart that splits it out into two hoppers that go into the double chest and so that will be running at double hopper speed as opposed to single hopper speed output which should keep up with the dropper speed which in turn should actually keep up with the whole system altogether. Now I built this here and um, I didn't run through it with you so what we'll do is we'll go through it on this side um, just to show you. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to break this up a little bit here first of all. We're going to add a hopper to the side here and then a hopper into the side of this one here and again not like it makes a huge difference, but add a composter on top of any open hoppers that don't require anything. We're going to be using these two hoppers as the output for this one here. And again, what you can do is just go ahead and cover it up. It's going to make it a little bit larger, guys. I'm going to be honest with you, but this is probably more desirable to have a slightly larger output area over here and for it to look a little bit 
less fancy and to work a little bit better. Uh, but what we're going to want to do is we want to grab a wall for this case too. So any wall will do. We're going to want to grab any kind of rail and then we also want to grab a hopper minecart. Um, so what we'll do is we want to add a wall into the hopper furthest down the back, a rail right in front of it. And then we're going to grab a minecart onto the rail and we're going to push it all the way forward until it can't go anywhere anymore. And then we can break those. You want to grab a couple gravity blocks so it can be sand and it can actually be powdered concrete too because even though it's going to get wet uh, and turn hotter into a solid concrete it doesn't really matter so in this case i'm just going to use sand and that's that solution so now if i put in items in there that you've seen uh should have dropped in let's chuck in uh, a good amount of items in there uh let's see you can see in there it's coming in at double hopper speed now because it's splitting the item output into two hoppers which is in turn making it a little bit faster so that's that part sorted so what we're going to want to do here is we want to make the item stream a little bit shorter on this side so i believe it's around here where we're going to want to break it out so um remember the dropper is now going to be underneath just like so and in fact let's go ahead and do this one again just so you can see and we're going to paste that, put a block there, uh, we've got a note block right there, I'm going to go grab an observer from here because I'm lazy, and we're going to go ahead and put that like that, observer facing downwards or upwards depending on which way you look at it, I always say the face towards you is it facing downwards because it's looking down, um, but I think that's actually the wrong orientation, and again just double check everything's working, there we go, all good. So now uh, we're going to come from the dropper, we're going to come three out and we're going to reroute this water stream right here, adding in glass. And from here we'll be four out uh, from this section here. We'll just go ahead and block all this up and now we can get rid of all the excess stuff from here. Go ahead and clear up all this water and actually we can get rid of most of this stuff here as well now. Go ahead and get rid of all that. So once we come out to this side, all we want to do is break this piece here. Grab the slab, which I obviously removed. And then we're just going to want to grab a soul sand piece. And then we're going to basically build up from here. And what you want to do is obviously grab your water from here as well. And then we're going to want to start filling it up. Before we do that, we'll make sure everything works in somewhat of a correct manner as of right now. Perfect. And there we go. So we can see that's all good there. And let's carry on building this up until we get to the top. So we should be uh, somewhat, sorry, that's one level too small. We're going to want to bring it up to the same level as the sand. And we can actually stop uh, in front of that sand so we can build just like this. And that should cover that as well. And then once we fill this up, that should be... As long as you don't do anything stupid like that, that should be us pretty much done. And that covers those two sides as well. Now, um, obviously, you're going to see there's some leftover blocks here, which are no longer relevant, like these glass blocks on the side. You can obviously just recycle them, keep them for the uh, glass that you're going to be needing beforehand uh, for, for this side here. And obviously, the last thing we want to do is add a couple of trap doors into the water source there just like that that'll stop the items from flying upwards and and then heading into this stream instead and then we're going to want to do the same here actually made a small mistake on this side i realized that's actually supposed to be there and that's supposed to be like that and that should be the solution to all your problems though not the prettiest of the bunch that should take care of all the toggle states uh the output speed and it should take care of uh the, the toggle state on this side too um i hope that does uh, you know become somewhat helpful for you guys I know it's not a, a great solution, but again, it does work. You can hide most of it in um, a bit of a build. And the thing I wanted to mention to you earlier was that even though this is a relatively good smelter with or without the fixes, um, I've got something else that might, I'm, I'm going to be releasing relatively soon, maybe in the next couple of days, uh, something a little bit smaller and almost as fast as it was originally. Um, and it kind of works in any dimension, doesn't use water streams and stuff. I think it's a little bit better than what I've currently got here, but um obviously not everyone's going to want to change a super smart build so i thought the first and most important thing to do would be to decide to fix this first so i hope this um was somewhat helpful again like subscribe i'll see you in the next one Bye bye